we only have this moment, sparkling like a star in our hand and melting like a snowflake. <laughs> now, I'm supposed to warm this thing up for John, okay? <laughs> now, I tell you what you have to do. I don't feel your energy right now, okay? <laughs> and I have to get on a plane to go back to Indiana. I don't know where I'm gonna end up before the night is over, given the weather. So you're gonna have to give me a little bit of energy. Give me some energy, give it up. It, it is indeed an honor and a privilege, and I mean that quite sincerely, to join you for the inauguration of my friend and colleague, John William Bardo as the 13th president of Wichita State University. Having served with John as a chancellor of the University of North Carolina system, I can tell you from personal experience that you're truly, truly fortunate to have President Bardo as your leader. Arguably, John is one of America's most visionary. See, it's not enough to be visionary, you have to be focused, knowledgeable, passionate, and effective university chief executive officers. Um, and so I'm happy to be here, John. But you know, John wouldn't be the person that he is without the support that he is the recipient of from his wonderful wife and life partner, Deborah and from that person they produced together, Christopher, who's a student at North Carolina Central University, the place where I had an opportunity to serve as chancellor for a season. And so I'm delighted to be in your presence, Deborah, and of course, John. The words that I shared with you upon coming to the podium are from Marie Benin Ray, and they capture the essence and the urgency of the moment before us. We have only this moment sparkling like a star in our hand and melting like a snowflake. As we pause to celebrate the inauguration of President Bardo, we do so amid an environment characterized by growing tuition increases and a trillion dollar student loan level, constant changes and increasing societal expectations. As we gather here this afternoon, we do so at a time when President Obama has asked our colleges and universities to assist in his quest to have 60% of all Americans possess a post high school credential by the year 2020. Also at a time when persons on both sides of the political aisle are questioning the value of a college degree. And I'm here to tell you that it's worth it. It is worth it. A few years ago, Miguel Ruiz published a book that received wide acclaim and acceptance entitled The Four Agreements. Some of you may have read that book. If you may have attempted to change your life according to what Ruiz had to say, and it's called A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom. Ruiz challenged his readers to one, be impeccable with their words, two, not to take anything personally, which is very difficult to do, three, not to make assumptions, and four, to always do your best, to always do your best. In reflecting on the state of affairs in the academy and the lessons that I learned during my 44 years of ex leadership in higher education, three years as a chancellor, and in thinking about what I might share with you today relative to how you can take full advantage of the experience and the passion and all of those things I talked about about John Bardo and his leadership in making WSU a great, a great public urban research university. The first sentences from the first chapter of Tom Collins's book, Good to Great, Good to Great, and some of you, I'm sure many of you have read that book. That first sentence reads, and I quote, good is the enemy of great. Good is the enemy of great. Although the book is a series of case studies about companies that catapulted ahead of others in becoming great, many of the ideas articulated by Collins have relevance for universities. During my tenure as a member of the Board of Trustees of the NCAA Higher Learning Commission and later as chair of that commission, I was always impressed uh, with the accomplishments of Wichita State University and the other public universities in the state of Kansas. Now, in order to become uniformly great, I want to challenge the WSU faculty 
to make not four commitments. I want to challenge four agreements. I want you to make six commitments. There's a difference between an agreement and a commitment. We'll talk about that after the program. <laughs> First and foremost, here's what you have to do. I challenge you to commit or to recommit yourselves to the values that define the academy. These include a commitment to teaching service and the discovery of knowledge and creativity, shared governance, civility, academic freedom, and community engagement. These, I believe, not only do I believe it, I'm convinced that these are non-negotiable values that cannot and must not be violated. Second, I challenge you to make a commitment to keeping students, those students who stood up, those students who performed last night, and those students who are in class today and will be there tomorrow. Keep students at the center of everything that you do. Keep them right in the center. You see, colleges and universities don't exist to provide presidential leadership opportunities for presidents and chancellors. <laughs> and jobs for vice presidents and deans and department chairs. Oh no, they don't provide uh, opportunities, they exist to provide opportunities even for trustees and regents. They provide to serve as, they exist to serve as engines of opportunity for the citizens of the state. In the case of a public university, for the citizens of a state. In this case, the state of Kansas. Simply put you all, the students that you recruit and enroll must graduate with a high quality credential across the board, not in selected programs, but all of the programs must equip students with a competitive credential with value in the marketplace. Education, you see, is more than a collection of courses. I know we divide the curriculum up in our little fancy way, but education, true education, is more than a collection of courses. The students that we graduate, in the words of a great futurist uh, who said that students of the future must be capable of learning, unlearning, and relearning. And the reason for that is students, the jobs that you're gonna compete for don't even exist today. So you must possess the ability to think critically and analytically and to be able to express yourselves orally and in writing. And if we fail to do that for you, we have failed you. So keep students at the center of everything that you do. Everything. Third, you counting, John? While President Bardo's commitment to academic excellence is important, to be sure, I challenge the entire university community to embrace excellence in all that you do, inside and outside the classroom. See, true education is a, is a, is a, is a partnership between the affective and the cognitive domains. There are a lot of people with degrees who are not very well educated. And so what we have to do is to avoid making that mistake of equipping people with a credential without providing them with an education. But this is how Aristotle said it. He said, quote, excellence is an art won by training and habitation. We do not act rightly because we have virtue or excellence, but rather we have those because we have acted rightly. We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence then, excellence, is not an act but a habit, end of quote. Excellence then is not an act, but a habit. Fourth, if one were to look across the panoply of universities to identify those that are routinely identified as great, you would discover that it is not the size of their endowments, even though many of them may have rather large endowments, but there's some excellent universities with very modest endowments. There are excellent or great universities without students who score at the very top of the, of, the, of the quartile, the highest quartile, in terms of the SAT or their ACT scores. Those things are important, but that's not what defines greatness. Rather, they are great in large measure because they enjoy significantly higher levels of communication and collaboration. Don't you confuse exchanging information on a text message, on an email, with communicating. There's a difference. That's information exchange. And so what I'm challenging you to do today is to collaborate across academic boundaries and these superficial silos that we put together, and we have named them 
the college, the department, the division, et cetera. Now, I know you don't have silos here, John, but in case you do, you have an outsider who has come to challenge people here to think differently about the way in which they collaborate. The fifth commitment that I challenge WSU to make en route to becoming a truly great university is to embrace diversity. The diversity of which I speak cuts across ethnic and gender, and bound, uh, gender boundaries and sexual orientation, age, and physical condition. Diversity, true diversity, is about more than black and white. I'm talking about the full range of diversity elements. I'm challenging you to commit yourselves to embracing diversity in ways in which you've never embraced it before. Failure to do so will result in our students not being educated in such a way that they can live, lead, and work in a world without boundaries. Embrace diversity. The sixth and final commitment that I challenge you to make is to tell the WSU story of excellence, opportunity, and accomplishments more assertively, consistently, and boldly. Yours is a powerful and wonderful story that others in the academy can benefit from. In closing, since you didn't come to hear me, you came to hear John, and rightfully so, I have two simple but very important questions that I have to ask you. A decade from now, when perhaps John and Deborah are getting ready to go off and do something else and mark the end of their presidency, where do you want Wichita State University to be 10 years from now? What's that end in mind that you want for this university? That's the first question. The second question is, are you prepared to work collaboratively with the president to make that vision a reality? See, Leadership is fine, but you got to have followership. Vision is fine, but you got to have focus. And if you don't have followership and collaboration and communication, you're not going to get where you want to go. It is my heartfelt belief that we only have this moment, sparkling like a star in our hand and melting like a snowflake. I wish you well on your journey to greatness. And John William Bardo, congratulations and Godspeed.